Are software engineers the new blue collar worker? I was having a conversation at work about job classifications and how you ensure people are in the right kind of roles that are either classified as hourly or salary and all the different things that go into it. And I couldn't help myself and just blurted out a prediction that I believe the software engineering roles, some of them, may find themselves qualifying and classifying as hourly positions in the somewhat near future. So blue collar workers, eh, blue collar by the way is not a real term. There's not a like official definition of what that means and what that doesn't. There's sort of blue collar workers generically, people like to ascribe that to people who work for their hand, with their hands, maybe repetitive. You typically think of manufacturing positions. White collar, you typically think of office workers, you know, advanced four-year liberal arts type degrees. And actually, I think they tried to make this thing called pink collar workers happen. I don't think that ever caught on, but anyway, that was like sales and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, my point isn't really that I think software engineers are blue collar workers. It's that I think many of the concepts that apply to the notion of blue collar work are starting to apply to the world of software engineering. So when I think of blue collar workers, I think of them as the backbone to our entire, you know, civilization. And those are the roles that build our houses, meaning to build our streets, plumbing, they keep stuff running. They are the only reason that I am able to enjoy modern technology and infrastructure. And so those roles tend to be the ones that build, that create the essential pieces. And they have historically tended to be ones that are done with the hands and didn't always require that somebody go off to a four-year university somewhere to learn them. So think of your plumber. Typically they would take on an apprenticeship and really grow and, and mold the roles. What I'm starting to see on the software engineering side is that we're seeing just this ubiquitous use of programming, coding, software engineering, software architecture built into the fabric of everything that we do. And we're starting to see those roles become more common and not only more common, but more accessible. I personally know of many, many instances of highly skilled, uh, just amazing programmers, software engineers without a computer science degree. And I think we're going to see more and more of that. In fact, I'll parallel the notion of how some people are learning software engineering with the way that they learn many of the, you know, hands-on trades. So if you think about uh, a lineman, they typically went through an apprenticeship program. How is that different than these boot camps and these deep trainings that I'm seeing around really learning how to, you know, code and program and put in uh, different parts of language? I think there's some parallels here and we're starting to see that more and more. So I think we're going to start seeing software engineering be a more accessible career opportunity for people who aren't wanting to go to a traditional school and that might want to learn the trade through alternative learning, say trade schools, through boot camps, through apprenticeship programs. And I am not belittling the software engineering field as a science at all. I think we definitely still need true computer scientists. I think there is an art and a complexity and a science that goes into the deep aspects of true architectural design of your you know, engineering products on the software side. There are so many specialties in design, user experience, data science, the actual infrastructure aspects of software engineering can be quite intense, quite complex. But I also would parallel that to some of the amazing things that I've seen in the other essential work areas, say welding. There is, you know, entry level apprentice type ship welding positions, and we typically would call that blue collar. But at the same time, you get some amazing, true mix of art and science when you think about metallurgic properties of how you do welding in an advanced stage that has so much to do with the architecture and the integrity of the way the metals are there together. So my comment isn't that I think software engineering is a blue collar job necessarily. What I'm saying is some of the aspects about the way that software engineering is becoming more common, more prolific, mirrors some of the ways that we've seen many of the manual trades become more prolific and necessary to our environment, our infrastructure, and that both can now be entered in 
potentially without a four-year degree, through various methods of training and growing, and that each can advance to be pure sciences, each can be implemented in different ways. In fact, I'm loving where you see the intersection of technology and things like manufacturing. Look up lean manufacturing, it's amazing. And this is why I think software engineering is the next blue collar job. It's because I think it's the next job that is going to be big and prolific and build our infrastructures and build the things that we interact with in our lives. And in fact, it already is. All right, I know this might have been a little controversial one, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether or not you think software engineering is our next blue collar job. And, you know, maybe put a reminder in your calendar, check in with me in 2030 and tell me if I was right or wrong. All right, looking forward to talking to you later.